Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Now, shedding more light on this visit, uh, Dr. Abu Zaid. Now, President Sisi's visit to Oman uh, this time around, it's his second visit. The first one was in 2018. And before that, the last visit by uh, an Egyptian leader was in 2009. Now, this is the first visit for President Sisi to meet Sultan Haysam. This is part of a two legged uh, tour that will later on take him to Bahrain. What is the significance of such a visit to a, con a country like Oman meeting Sultan Haysam for the first time? Um, first of all, the visit to Oman is part of an intensified effort from the Egyptian leadership to meet with Arab leaders mm -hmm. and international leaders, high level leaders. Uh, we're talking about the visit to uh, the uh, king of, of Bahrain, but we're talking also about previous visits uh, of the uh, high levels of uh, and representative of Saudi Arabia, of the Prince of Qatar, uh, among others. Mm -hmm. uh, there is unprecedented dynamics, uh, I would say, in the, in the Arab world, which is, of course, expected as unprecedented or unusual circumstances worldwide that really demands the, 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 the solidarity, the understanding, the coordination among the Arab leaders. If you talk about Oman mm -hmm. itself, or specifically here, uh, Oman has always had uh, a very special relationship with Egyptian uh, uh, leadership, with the Egyptian, with, among Egypt and Oman since long time. And as a matter of fact, many of the viewers wouldn't perhaps know that it was actually like 2,000, 3,000 years ago, mm -hmm. there were even ties between the old empires of Egypt and, and Oman at the time. Mm -hmm. Oman is a country that uh, had always had, uh, let's say, investment in Egypt, cooperation on various fronts. Uh, on a more personal level, I'm, I'm someone who visited Oman at least 10 times on educational trip, on coordination, uh, in, in high-level education, let's say, uh, planning, strategic planning, accreditation, and so on. Uh, it's a country that really cherishes Egypt and would always opt for opportunities to cooperate. But I would also commend the present visit at that time because Oman is a highly influential country and a country that plays always a, a reasonable, uh, a rational uh, uh, policy even in times of, of, of uh, let's say, instability, uh, uh, troubles and so on. So. Uh, mm -hmm. I commend very much the visit at that time for Oman in particular. Yes. Well, Doctor, as you've mentioned, uh, Oman's policy is usually uh, referred to as a quiet policy. It's not really involved in a lot of the uh, political or uh, military sort of uh, developments taking place anywhere in the world. It has a very stable, quiet uh, political uh, way in diplomacy in dealing with things. How influential would it be uh, to make use of Oman's diplomacy and strengthening the political relations between Egypt and Oman at this time that, as you've mentioned, we're going through a lot of political differences and turmoils throughout the whole world? Um, actually, this is a lovely question because Oman is a country that plays a quiet policy, but I would add to, to the word quiet able. Mm -hmm. They know exactly what they are doing. Uh, they, they opt not to take sides in time of, of uh, let's say, heavy uh, uh, conflicts, mm -hmm. uh, not because that they wouldn't want to, but because they, they, they had played in several previous occasions the role of, of good mediators among, among uh, uh, many nations. Mm -hmm. uh, I would like to link what I'm saying with the geographic location of Oman. Mm -hmm. uh, Oman is, let's say, on the edge of the Arab, Arab world, west, south, west of, of, the, of the Arab world, and at the same, south, sorry, of the Arab world, and at the same time, very close to having some maritime borders with Pakistan, with, with, with Iran, not far from India. So it's like the gate to the, to the Arab Arabian Gulf or the Persian Gulf, whichever way you want to put it, uh, is, is through Oman. So Oman plays strategically the, the role based on its actually uh, uh, ge geography of a good mediator in times of trouble. And that happened before. Uh, I would like to say to you that in a meeting before that wasn't planned for me while I was, was going to, to one of my visits to Oman, that uh, I ran into some, some uh, let's say, uh, people who are involved in, in, in diplomacy, and they mm -hmm. say, and, and they are really trusted individuals, that uh, individuals that Oman has always opted to be um, 
playing that role and it is like a trusted partner for various let's say uh, disagreeing parties during time of conflict uh, uh, to be more actually specific in your in your uh, in, in responding to your lovely question i would say this is the time where the the world is even making choices um, difficult choices mm -hmm. and crisis that not only political but turn to be political to economic and within the the, the 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 africa within asia within within europe the whole world there is this kind of stance among mm -hmm. different nations and oman is definitely uh, pivotal in this regard uh, a last thing to say is that let's not forget that oman was one of the founding countries of uh, the the uh, uh, the council for 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 uh, gulf Coop cooperation nations mm -hmm. that includes bahrain that was uh, launched in 1981 in abu dhabi so all the the, the the gulf area i would say like like uh, oman has a special place saudi arabia gulf emirates qatar oman has a special place among that uh, group of uh, of countries as well which mm -hmm. is definitely uh, one of the world's most influential countries in terms of energy, petroleum, gas, and so on. Mm -hmm. Well, Doctor, it seems, as you've mentioned now, this tour and this visit that takes the, the president to our men is part of um, a string of visits. Uh, we've seen the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia, uh, Qatar, now our men, later on with Bahrain. Now, is there something being prepped in terms of, because um, a lot of observers are saying, well, brace yourself for maybe an, uh, some sort of an Arab uh, unit, an Arab union between all these leaders of the Arab countries and the Gulf cooperation countries, uh, and Egypt being uh, a big major player politically and economically within the African continent and the Middle East. People are looking at these visits uh, and they're anticipating some sort of a political uh, union between uh, all these leaders and their respective countries. And also some other people are saying, well, it's mainly an economic tour, the strengthening of the economic relations, as you've mentioned, the whole world is being affected economically right now. What should we believe? What should we be anticipating? A political movement, uh, an economic cooperation, what should we expect? Um, that's, that's one of the actually uh, key questions that, that are being asked and whenever you look anyone actually you don't have to be one doesn't have to be highly specialized in politics to watch what's going on and, and wonders what it's, is really in the pipeline, what's really mm -hmm. happening. So I'll take both parts first, the political part. The political part, my own assessment is that Egypt as I would like to say the natural leader of the of the uh, uh, Arab world. We are, the, as they call us, the the, the big brother or or the, the, the mother of nations. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, we're proud of that, but we're also proud of our Arab uh, uh, countries uh, uh, since since the dawn of history. We're talking about that that Egypt is playing its natural role role in in, in maintaining solidarity among uh, the Arab world. Something I want to, to, to mention, it's a side note, but it's an important side note. I think you and the viewers follow the escalation that's happening and the threats among Iran and, and Israel, mm -hmm. the, 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 the possibility of some kind of conflict uh, in the region, w w where Egypt definitely uh, has, has a say and has a stand and ha has a role to play, heaven forbid, if something like that erupts. We mm -hmm. don't look for wars. We are have been for decades for centuries for peace but these are not easy uh, times these situations so on a political point uh, of view or a political aspect i would say the arab world is trying to take let's say a coherent stand and not to too much get involved into the, the ongoing war between uh, russia and ukraine we and, and the president was, was very wise in his recent uh, um, uh, let's say uh, talks and discussions that the first thing he was opting for is that let's try to stop the bloodshed, let's work for, for peace, let's try to get people on the negotiating table. We say that not because they are words, but because we, no matter what the, the outcome of any war is, mm -hmm. but the people lose, people die, land is destroyed, whatever size or country you're talking about. So 
Egypt, I think, is playing the political role in trying to have this coherent stand among the Arab nations and not overly to get in, involved into that while helping. Uh, by the way, I, I have to say something on a human uh, level that the president uh, of Ukraine, Zelensky, uh, picked uh, and the phone and, and had a special long phone call with President Sisi months ago in appreciation for what Egypt has done to the Ukrainian who were trapped here as tourists and so on. Although this may appear as something small, but it mm -hmm. tells you that, that Egypt has this kind of human uh, understanding for conflicts and will not hesitate to do that, whether it's an Arab country or a friend or uh, a neighboring country or European country as such. On economic one, which is no less important, you're talking about the countries that have at least 70% of the uh, world reserve on petroleum uh, and gas. Mm -hmm. Okay. Of course, the, the, the other big part goes to, to Russia and a few other countries, especially when it comes to gas. Uh, the, 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 the trade of the world goes through the, the oil and gas through the, 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 the Arab, around the Arab Peninsula, the Persian Gulf, Suez Canal in Egypt and so on. Uh, the, 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 you, you hear and we follow the pressure being put on, on OPEC countries to try to increase their production and lower and control the prices of oil. Mm -hmm. And Egypt, in, uh, in the midst of that, we want also all our nations not to suffer from economic, uh, let's say, slump and, mm -hmm. and, and, and drops and so on. Uh, a last note to say, and, and I'm, I'm really sad to say it because we uh, look at what's happening in Europe these days. I mean, mm -hmm. we don't, e countries mighty economic powers uh, in, 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 in Europe, mm -hmm. Germany, France, England, people are suffering. And we're talking about countries that are, the G7 is meeting these yes. days, yes. And, and most of the countries, the G7 express their worry about their own countries' uh, economic situations. Mm -hmm. So that yes. can, can also uh, give a little bit of a glimpse of what the, 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 these visits are about in terms of economic solidarity. And since we were kids at school, we always talked about uh, at Takamul, the integration among the Arab nations economically and, and uh, in, in these aspects. Mm -hmm. And I think there is no more ripe time than this time for this integration to take place. Yes. Well, we're going to talk later on uh, more about the economic cooperation uh, between both countries or Egypt and the whole new bloc. Uh, but Touching upon what you've mentioned uh, during the situation with Iran, I mean, now we're witnessing even today news about the, there will be talks regarding the uh, Iranian nuclear deal, still trying to uh, work it out after uh, former President, U.S. President Donald Trump unilaterally walked out of the nuclear deal. And there should be a meeting uh, between uh, countries, including the U.S., with Iran and uh, the representative mm -hmm. from there taking place at a Gulf country, not specifying which country, but it is widely expected that it would be Qatar. Now, do you think that these sort of visits have something to do with such a meeting, anticipating whether things would go according to plan, whether they do reach uh, a, a renewal of the uh, nuclear agreement or if still it, it hits uh, a dead end and um, a prolonged impasse? Uh, I would, uh, again, another lovely question, and not easy one. Uh, I would say my own uh, impression or my own prediction about that is that, no, there is going to be talks between the U.S. slash the West and Iran. And I feel that this is going to be resolved one way or another. It's a matter of negotiating cards and who would, would negotiate best and, and what can you get out of that. Let's not forget that Iran is also one of the oil producing countries and, and, and influential in this regard and is going f forward or further in developing its nuclear uh, weapons if, if, that, if these talks are, are correct or, or true. Of course, uh, one, wouldn't, one has to be cautious when you make mm -hmm. statements like that because uh, nobody knows deni uh, Iran denies and, and the West confirms and Israel saying. But also there is another escalation that I would like to, to, to pinpoint here is that also, and that's quite relevant, Israel against Lebanon and against Hezbollah and against... So, so you're talking about uh, five, six, seven countries at least in mm -hmm. the focal point of the heart of the Arab world where there is some kind of escalation. And what you would want to do as a leader mm -hmm. uh, or as a nation also, not just the leaders of the, of the Arab world, is to try to put out any 
possible fire at that time because definitely this is not the time that, that any other foreign or external force would, would have the time or support to give being busy and occupied about mm -hmm. uh, what it's internationally happening. So I would agree with, with this prediction or with this uh, uh, thought that there is going to be talks. And by the way, this is the third or fourth time we see a change of American uh, administration or president mm -hmm. and a change of the, the, the talks or the nature of the talks or the no talks with Iran. Mm -hmm. So it seems like this thing is happening uh, often. I'm not belittling that. I'm just saying mm -hmm. that talks, in my view, will happen and at least will put this thing to a quiet status for the time being. Yes. Well, another conflict that is uh, taking place, it has been taking place for quite some time, is the situation between Yemen and Saudi Arabia, for instance. Now, do you feel that with all these visits, or maybe just focusing at least on uh, Oman being an influential part uh, within uh, this region, do you feel that something could result in terms of diplomatically solving the conflict between Yemen and uh, neighboring Gulf countries? Uh, I would say so, and I will add again to the list of, of when you say Oman, and when you say Saudi Arabia and, and Yemen, I would say also Iran, because maybe the viewers do not know that Iran is one of the countries that have some let's say, face and trust in the Omani uh, party as, as a negotiating uh, unbiased mm -hmm. uh, uh, partner in these kind of talks. So I would expect that, that Oman will play this role. They play it uh, uh, in a good and in a fair uh, way and in an open way. And, and I say that uh, because history has shown us uh, this is uh, as something to happen. Uh, <clears throat> on, on a side note, I, I like to share with you and the viewers something. Uh, for those who haven't been to Oman, and, and I, I will use the opportunity because I've been there several times, as I mentioned. Oman, when you meet the Omani people, uh, you would feel, without any effort, without anyone telling, you feel that you are at peace. They are people that you would rarely, if any, you see any quarrel. People are moving in peace. They, they want their nature. Uh, uh, throughout history. They were f originally fishermen, uh, people who go for, for, for catching pearls and so on from the Gulf, divers and so on. Mm -hmm. So their, their sea nature taught them to be quiet, to be patient, to be able to deal with, 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 with the ups and downs of nature like anyone who lives by a sea and harbor and doesn't know what tomorrow will bring to him and to his family. I think this is genetically uh, uh, ingrained in the DNA of the Omani people. So they are nice people to deal with. And in this nature, I think, it reflects also in their political uh, attitudes. Uh, over the past 49 years, by the way, Oman has been, uh, Sultan of Oman has been uh, named as the country that has witnessed uh, the highest growth rate over almost half a century. Mm -hmm. Of course, countries go up and down. Of course, China was one of the countries that, that, that occupied or mm -hmm. the news for the last two decades, but Oman has always been steadily moving in that direction. And since you alluded earlier in your, in your nice introduction about the economic cooperation between Egypt and, and Oman, definitely uh, Egypt always looks to its interest. And I'm sure and I hope that some good outcome for cooperation, investment, as came in your nice report, also mm -hmm. will result in from that yeah. visit. Dr. Abu Zaid, uh, now this is the first visit uh, between President Sisi to Sultan uh, Haysam now. Now, Sultan Qaboos has been uh, quite a, a renowned uh, leader of Oman, and now with the change of uh, the Sultan. Now, do you feel a, a different change to the dynamics of the Sultanate, a different direction, uh, political uh, dynamics have changed, or is it a, a smooth sort of continuation of what Sultan Qaboos has been doing for decades? Uh, I think it's going to be a good uh, continuation uh, with new ideas, with new vision, with uh, new, uh, uh, any new leader who comes to a position uh, as, as uh, faithful and as uh, dedicated as he or she is will always opt for the best mm -hmm. uh, for his country. Uh, again, I want to say that in January when uh, uh, late Sultan Kapus pa passed, 
Qaboos passed away. I was in, in Oman, I happened to be at that time in one of my educational missions. And you would feel that the country is at peace. Uh, a great leader has passed away. And in very few days, the, the, the royal family, they have a process. We, we may want mm -hmm. have a chance to talk about it in another, uh, another occasion. And uh, the Sultan Tariq has been named to, to, to be his successor. Uh, one important side note for, for people who were, uh, have good memory for the seven, late 70s and early 80s, mm -hmm. there was a time that there was a hiccup between the Arab nations and Egypt uh, 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 following the, the, the peace treaty between Egypt and Israel, mm -hmm. which later on most, if not all of these nations, wish that the, they have joined at that time. The one country that maintained good relations officially and formally was, 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 was Oman, mm -hmm. or one of the very few countries. Uh, these are little, uh, let's say, uh, shots or, 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 or like, uh, like uh, screenshots, if mm -hmm. you want to say. Or, or f but it, it shows you the nature of the people that, that they really cherish that. And it was a time of, let's say, uh, turbulence, but they managed and the whole Arab world uh, has reconsidered their views about this matter as well. Yes. Well, ladies and gentlemen, as uh, Dr. Abu Zaid has mentioned, this visit does strengthen the political uh, bilateral relations between both countries, but also economically uh, and commercially, this, the relations and the prospects of strengthening the relations between Egypt and Oman are enormous. Let's check out this report and we'll be right back.